Raspberry B. Benson. So you see soda spilled on a sidewalk and you don't drink it? Oh boy, now we get to the beer ranks. Now these fights, I genuinely think are really good. The only thing holding them back is that they are not the A ranks. They're still good though. And on to number 22. Here we have another minigame based final boss. And this time, it's superior compared to Void. Also, this is the only boss from Murderous Sonic the Hedgehog, so, so take that what you will. This is also the last of the Dream Gear minigames and will consist of six sections, all of which progressively get harder as you go along. While collecting the ring requirements can seem simple, this is actually easier said than done in some regards. While the gameplay is simple when compared to the other final bosses on this list, much like other final bosses, the story of this fight is actually quite emotional. Much like Emerald, only this time the boss theme is actually acceptable, as Mirage Express just wants to be with the conductor, in the most aggressive way possible, but he just wants to be with the conductor. Just maintaining your ring counter is quite a challenge, and it was only my first time playing this game. Sonic's friends do help out by revealing that there is a Flicky inside the train, and after you do the 100 ring segment, Espio will rescue the Flicky, and Amy will destroy this thing once and for all, because nobody messes with her birthday party. And also, the conductor will say his last goodbye to the train. I'm like, dang. Like, I didn't know it was that emotional. We're going back to Sonic Battle levels of emotional again, so like, come on, man. What's up with that? While this fight may be simple in terms of gameplay, the story really makes up for it. Even if this game is just an April Fool's joke. It's the best April Fool's joke ever made. our highest ranking 8-bit boss on this list, because this boss is surprisingly tough, even if you use the tubes. This boss is unlocked when you get the Chaos Emeralds, and also, this is the very first boss in the series to apply this condition to a final boss. What you have to do in this fight is dodge this boss's attacks by using the tubes, as the attacks will kill you instantly since you don't have any rings. And if you're wondering, yes, for certain 8-bit entries, I did use the Master System version since the Game Gear is a small screen did not prioritize the fights very well. For being as tough as it is, I find this fight to be pretty surprising. And it was also the very first game in the series where you had to get the Chaos Emeralds in order to fight a secret boss. While yes, you do spend the majority of this fight in the tubes and all that, which is kind of a drawback for some people, but as long as it keeps me safe, alright? Come on! I just think this fight is cool! Now let's go on to number 20. Here we are in the top 20. While this is still the B tier, these fights only get better from here on out. Starting with the Egg Salamander. In this fight you play as both Super Sonic and Burning Blaze, as they fight their respective Eggman. For the first phase, you build up your rings while avoiding the dreaded knockback lasers. And once you get near to him, things start to get a bit tricky around here. Eggman will fire projectiles that will encircle you and you have to time your boosts. Perfect! <laughs> or just deflect the green balls into him for easy damage. Once the first part is over, you switch over to Blaze, and she fires her projectiles. In Blaze's parts, you fire at Eggman Nega, and actually, this part is easier than Sonic's parts in my opinion, since you actually have to fire instead of waiting for a tricky projectile for you to deflect. While as Sonic, it can be quite tricky to attack Eggman, the rest of the fight is honestly really good. Also, Wrapped in Black is a pretty cool theme. Just listen. Go back to Sonic and then you still have to deflect the projectiles back into him while also avoiding missiles that actually hurt you. Same thing for Blaze, except a claw generated wormhole will actually hurt you. Overall, this fight has a lot going for it. 
especially for Sonic's first outing on the DS. But if you want that S rank, may chaos protect you. And here we have the highest ranking advanced series boss in this list. Not like after beating the game as everybody while having all the Chaos Emerald to Sonic, the game shows Vanilla taking a stroll in Leaf Forest until she gets sucked into Eggman's machine. Cream watches in horror and then cries, prompting Sonic to give chase. So the real fight takes place in space near Earth since this is more or less a callback to Doomsday Zone. This boss shoots missiles that you have to deflect back to Eggman, but are significantly more difficult to anticipate because GBA's screen size is very small, and also there is a vacuum that actually drains your rings, and a tail beam that actually freezes you, all of which are a pain to get out of. Later in the fight, he will use the fabled speed maneuver, making it harder for you to hit the missiles into Eggman. This fight has a nice sense of challenge and kind of left me on edge at times. And except for battle, I've actually beaten the advanced series on physical. Chaos Emeralds and all, honey. Chaos Emeralds and all. Also, the cutscene that plays after you defeat this boss has some of the craziest music ever made for a GBA game. I'm gonna quote Dashi and be like, Seriously, who was in the studio cooking up this beat? Yeah, I think that this is the best final boss of the Advanced Trilogy. Also, for the best Advanced game, in my opinion. At some point, I forgot to put this fight on the list, and it was from the very first game in the series. Like, how? How could you forget that? So, this fight takes place after Scrap Brain Act 3, and this consists of Robotnik using strategically placed pistons to crush Sonic, and you have to hit the one that Robotnik is actually in. And whether you hit it or not, you also have to dodge four energy balls that will instantly kill you since you don't have any rings. Yes, this fight is simple, but it's also pretty effective, and it also set the standard for future final bosses in the series. Both the good, the bad, and the X. Yes, this fight did inspire other fights in the series, and it's a nice way to end off the first game in the series. Nothing else to say about this one, I just think it's neat. Oh good, another writer's game, and this is the last one we'll talk about on this list. Master Core Abyss is without a doubt the best boss of the Riders trilogy, since this is the only one that's actually enjoyable when compared to Grimace over here. This race takes place in the core of Babylon Garden, or the Mobius Strip as the game calls it. What you gotta do is keep your lead and save up your gravity points in order to hit the boss when he goes all back. And he uses a different attack depending on each lap that you're in. For example, in odd numbered laps, he will use big rocks and in even numbered laps, he will use energy blasts, or energy blasts on the odd numbered laps, or big rocks on the even numbered laps. Whichever ones, the attacks change throughout the laps. And unlike Babylon Guardian, you actually have to finish in first place. And in the story mode, you have to defeat it in five minutes, which adds a sense of urgency to this fight because it's some of the black hole after bringing the five parts of the cosmos to Babylon Guardian. Whoa! And this boss's design is also a big step up from the previous game, like... It actually looks really menacing. It reminds me of Metal Overlord. Which we'll get to in a moment. I just think this fight is actually pretty cool. And makes me wish for a new writer's game. Without, let's just say... Unorthodox means of controlling your character. Oh nice, 3D Blast is on this list. The Genesis version. This fight is interesting since this has five faces. Finger lasers, flamethrowers, the hands, rockets, and the bouncy balls of doom. These attacks can be quite tricky to dodge because isometric area, but all you need is some patience. And for a final fight, this is quite diverse. And much like a majority of bosses in the series, you will need the Chaos Emeralds, but I think it lands here because of its unique allure to me. The dark setting and its unique design really captures the strangeness of this game. And also, there's a limited amount of rings, so you gotta save those up. Also, this fight is kinda hard, but not 
horrifically difficult, but I can see why people would have some trouble with this fight because isometric 3D space and the physics of a Formula One race car on steroids. From its strange setting, challenging faces, and really catchy music, this boss is quite the fight. There are just other fights that rank higher than this one. It's quite refreshing for me to talk about 3D Blast on this channel. It's not a bad game once you get used to the physics and the isometric 3D space. We get another case of Port Over Main, this time with Sonic Generations. Okay, this one will also be short because we're gonna be tackling similar ground here, but there's gonna be major differences between this one and the console version, so bear with me. For starters, this fight fixes the big issue I had with the console version. Sonic's friends are silent in this one because, dang, they would not shut up. And this also makes the fight way more engaging because it actually takes eight hits rather than three. His attacks in this version also prove to be more challenging with each base. With classic Super Sonic, you avoid his home <laughs> And as modern Super Sonic, you have to fly into the time meter as to avoid his attacks, which can be quite tricky to avoid. Also, this version of the fight is quite lengthy. Overall, while it is similar to the console version with a lot of its attacks, unlike Lost World, I actually do enjoy it. Overall, I just feel like this version of the fight is way more fulfilling. It's a shame that not a lot of people talk about this version of Generations. I'm gonna let Nostalgia take the reins for this one, because this one is actually awesome. This fight takes place on the Planet Core. And much like its predecessor, you take control of Super Sonic and Burning Blaze. But unlike Rush, you actually switch between them on the fly. This allows you to play either defensively with Sonic or going on the offensive with Blaze. These attacks come at you quite fast, so be careful to keep your rings up as well. Also, this music is basically just breakcore. Like, the whole internet was going crazy over breakcore. They weren't even noticing this one. Not only does this fight excel in the challenge sector, it also succeeds with cinematics, especially with this song. Okay, why does this song give me sad AM vibes? If so, congratulations, you succeeded! From its unique challenge, strategic use of characters, and the perfectly chaotic theme for its music, this boss fight is a great way to end Sonic Rush Adventure. But alas, we have to move on to other fights. Okay, this one's a special case, so bear with me here, folks. I know that there is the Final Horizon version of this fight, but I consider them to be differences. They're different fights. Also, the fan base says that this scenario is just a simulation ran by Sage, so... This fight is accessed by playing the game on hard or extreme mode, as doing this on easy or normal will just trigger a QTE. After you defeat Supreme, the end will escape into its moon form, and Sage will take control of Supreme, and you fly into orbit along with Sage, with Eggman telling her, Be careful. Dear daughter. In short, this fight is Toho, and I love it for that. Funny enough, I actually put this fight at number four. Oh, how times change. Due to the Toho-esque nature of this fight, the attacks will come from each and every direction while you hold down the shoot buttons as you listen to the end monologuing. And this fight is quite lengthy since this boss's HP goes down slow. Oh yeah, I'm with you. An absolute masterpiece of a final boss theme. Please give this one a listen. Back to the fight. These attacks are absolutely relentless, so stay alert at all times because attacks will come from everywhere. And once you manage to drag down the end's HP to next to nothing, it's QTE time. Thankfully, a far simpler one than Dark Guy is. Then we transition to a cutscene of Sage giving the final blow to the end as she says to him, Please look after father. Dang. We got some emotional fights here. Okay, I know this fight can be a bit rushed to people, but besides that, this fight is actually awesome. Okay, 
it's info dumping time. To preface, after you collect the world rings, you encounter a razor again. And then he convinces Shara to give them to him, but then Sonic convinces her not to. Being unable to handle such a deep choice, she loses it and faints, prompting a racer to start monologuing about the rings and the legend and all that and all blah blah blah. He ends it with trying to kill Sonic only for Shara to intervene and take the blow for him. Sonic and Shara say their last goodbyes and then Eraser, with the power of the rings, goes cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, transforming into this unholy abomination against nature. But then three rings get released from him and fly into him, turning him into Dark Spide Sonic. Okay, that's the lore done. On to the fight. This fight relies on motion control, so yeah. Be prepared for a lot of shaking. This fight takes place in a void, where you have to dodge his shots by tilting the Wii Remote. As I said, motion controls are a thing in this fight, so get ready to shake a lot. While the motion controls are kind of a drawback for this fight, after you dodge the slashes, you have to shake the Wii Remote in order to build up your soul gauge and ram into his giant spirit bomb. And guess what you gotta do next? You gotta shake! As the fight goes on, his attacks get faster and faster, so use the Wii Remote to your advantage. Oh my god, bro, bro, calm down! Calm down, bro! Despite the excessive amounts of shaking, this fight is actually awesome in my own opinion. Not only for the nostalgia I have with this fight, the emotional connections prior to the fight are also really good. Oh yes, and after you finally defeat him, Sonic just gives us the roast of the century right here. Your tail is finished, Eraser. Next time, try writing a better story. And not to be outdone just yet. I told you, I'm not a rat. For those asking where Mania is gonna be on this list, you're in luck! Well, I adore the heck out of Sonic Mania, I also think that the final boss is also quite the finale, and miles better than what we got in Superstars. This fight has you facing off against two bosses, both containing their own attacks. The Phantom King has ranged attacks in the form of energy balls that can actually damage Super Sonic, and the Kleptomobile has swinging arms that can knock you about, yet they don't deal any damage. Don't be fooled by these attacks though, they move really fast, so be on the lookout for them. And like a majority of these supersonic fights, you have to maintain your rings. And unlike superstars, picking up rings in this fight is a breeze rather than a hellish task. Yeah, the bosses actually do relay once you hit one of them, causing you to be on your toes which is actually kind of awesome. Another cool detail in this fight is that the HUD, especially the timer, keeps glitching up because you're in a super screwy dimension. Oh, oh, oh my God. The music, oh my God. Zelos is on another dimension. Overall, I just think this fight is actually incredible, and it's kind of a cool segue into Sonic Forces, for better or for worse. 